Well, we are counting down to debate night in Indiana here at your local election headquarters as we bring in our panel now to talk about this crowded race for governor and our upcoming debate here with us in studio this week. We have former state party chair for the Indiana Democrats, Robin Winston, Purdue political science professor, Dr. Martin Sweet, who's also a veteran of the Rubio campaign and two former state lawmakers for the Democrats, former state rep, Terry Austin, and for the Republicans, former state rep, Mike Murphy. So Mike, I'll start with you. What are you expecting to hear from the candidates on the debate stage? They all have their issues that they wanna discuss the lieutenant governor likes to talk about cutting the state's income tax. Other candidates perhaps discussing economic development. What do you think we'll see out there? Well, I, I hope you'll see more than what you've seen in the, in the debate at the Palladium and the so-called forum they had back in Fishers. Those were, those were boring to the point of being very weak. We're going to try to keep things interesting. Yeah, they're starting to <laughs> feel each other out. They know where their weaknesses are. They know they have six weeks to go, whatever the, the case is. And they need to do something. They need to differentiate themselves. You know, being nice and coming in second doesn't do you a darn bit of good, right? Yeah. Terry, what are Democrats watching for here in this debate? Um, I think how bloody it gets, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, the ads have taken on a much tougher tone. They're turning on one another. They're exploiting their weaknesses. And all of this makes it very difficult for people to come back and unite the party for the fall. Martin, as Terry mentioned there, we've seen some of the candidates start to ramp up their attacks on Mike Braun. He's clearly the front runner. Uh, do you think we see more of that in our debate coming up? I think you have to, right? If you sort of learn the lesson of what Republicans have gone through nationally of not touching Trump, and the guy skates through in 16 and again now in 24. And so if Braun is sort of your Trump guy and he's in the lead, you've got to go after him if you want to have any hope at all. R Robin, what's your response to that? And what does your party uh, think as we look at what we're seeing in this primary? Well, it's a circular firing squad on their side. I mean, they're going to shoot each other down because somebody's got to get out front. Mike Braun, you're right, is probably the presumptive front runner. But people are doing everything they can to pull him down. There's rumors of a super PAC coming in to use ads against him. So we're just going to watch them uh, fight each other on television while we worry about phone banks, yard signs, and walking. All right. So again, four candidates in our debate, six candidates total in this Republican primary. And recently, Governor Holcomb was asked about whether he'll be making an endorsement soon. Along with that came a few somewhat critical words for this entire field of candidates looking to succeed him. Here's the governor from last week. What is your thought process right now at this point in the game? My thought process is uh, there are a lot of folks who approach me that are undecided because they're uninformed about where they stand on issues that a governor has to address on a day in day out basis. We can repeat words uh, and most of, of those words I see broad agreement within the candidates, but there are items that come across the governor's desk and what the legislature grapples with that aren't being discussed that I think should be more in detail. And so I may um, offer some thoughts on that, like, as I said, sooner rather than later. All right, so we'll see if the governor makes an endorsement soon. He did end up writing uh, an op-ed to that effect this week in the IBJ. Mike, what do you make of those comments uh, criticizing maybe this entire field for not being more detailed on some of the items that he says they'll deal with on a more regular basis? Well, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the governor, um, is, you know, he's in a good position to be able to talk about these things because he's not running for re-election. But he's also in a bad position to talk about these things because it's like, uh, why, does his, why does his opinion matter to some of these people, right? They think of him as already moving down the road and the future is to be standing at the debate stage, not in the governor's office, frankly. Yeah, Ter Terry, meantime, the governor just wrapping up the legislative session here in recent weeks. Uh, this past week, he vetoed the anti-Semitism bill. He also signed a bill into law uh, that uh, essentially strips away some of the power from the public access counselor. Uh, wh what did you make of where the session wound up here overall? Well, it, it was a lot um, crammed into a very short time some of the heaviest bills. I was really surprised that he signed the public access bill, quite honestly, um, because that dilutes his authority in many respects. And at a time when citizens on both sides, both whether regardless of, you know, whether you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or Independent, they're calling for more government transparency. And a bill like this just smacks of 
why are we telling the public access counselor what he can and cannot say? It certainly could be implications on all that for the next Absolutely. governor, the next administration. Martin, what do you make of, of those two bills, uh, public access and also the governor's veto this week on the anti-Semitism bill? He, he said he didn't think it went far enough. Right, and I think this, this is Holcomb's first veto, right? Okay. Um, and and maybe his last, or, or his last of the session. His Sorry. last, yeah, right. his first one this year. Um, yeah. But certainly, um, I actually think he did a wonderful job. I mean, it, here's the, 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 the this crazy part of the story, right, is that it's passed unanimously by the House. It essentially gets diluted somewhat in the Senate, and Holcomb and others said, that's just not good enough, right? And the complaint has been that some of these, the criticism that could be targeted under the anti-Semitism bill should be protected free speech. The problem is those people who are those critics have not been genuine First Amendment advocates, right? It is their ox who's being gored here. It is convenient for them who have always been claiming hate has no place here, suddenly, oh, they want to go after Jews, oh, suddenly we're free speech people. So I think good for Governor Holcomb for calling these people out and not buying their uh, bill of sales. Yeah, a lot of news on that, on that bill this past week for sure. Robin, you get the last word here. As we look back at this year's session overall and ahead to next year, uh, with whoever wins this race for governor taking the reins in 2025, what are the big issues you think our next governor will have to tackle in the new year? Well, I watched this, you asked what are Democrats doing? We're watching all these guys criticize the Republican administration. I mean, <laughs> that's their administration. When these guys are saying we're not creating enough jobs, our schools are not doing well, folks, they've been in office for 20 years. So the bottom line is that they're, they're criticizing their own party and running for their party's nomination. Terry, Mike, any quick thoughts on what you think this next governor will need to focus on in, in, the, in the coming years? Well, first, I guess the first thing I do is figure out who, who lost the billion dollars, right? Where is it in somebody's Medicaid pocket? Shortfall. Did it just yep. go out the window? Right. Did it go to some consultants? Who knows? I mean, we have to get better at planning our, planning our fiscal house. We do a good job at collecting taxes, and we have a great surplus, but we've got to do better. Speaking of that, I'm hearing there may be a special session in July mm. um, to get more money back to the uh, taxpayers midsummer and maybe talk about abortion. So. Who knows what the governor has planned? I'm, I'm obviously don't talk to him every day, but um, could be some action yet this summer. Terry, any final thoughts just on what the next governor will tackle? I think whoever he or she is, they are going to learn very quickly that the General Assembly has a mind of its own. And they We've don't mind roughshod, running roughshod <laughs> over any administration. Terry and Mike, you both served in that, in that <laughs> body, so you know that quite well, right? Stick around. We've got more coverage from your local election headquarters coming up right after this. We'll be right back.